Hi friends, welcome to another edition of Tuesdays with Joe where you ask your most burning UX questions and I do my best to answer them. Today's question is a bit of a long one, um, but I think it's really important because it, it speaks to something that I hear a lot, unfortunately, uh, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis. Um, it, it's sort of symptomatic of what's happening in the industries of UX design, product development, um, right now as a whole, and I think it's really important. So I want you to bear with me while I read the question because it's a little bit long, but I think it's really important. Okay, here we go. Uh, this comes from Jim. He says, I'm close to a year into a UX designer role in an agency where I'm leading projects, working with a team of brilliant designers, getting exposure to all sorts of different industries. Unfortunately, I'm miserable. The pressure to work very fast at any cost coupled with the expectation to be amazing, read always on, is stressing and burning me out. Clients have outrageous expectations, usually based on what they were sold. Designers are constantly asked to second guess and revisit our approach because a project manager and or a salesperson has decided what design can or should be. We don't have defined processes. Initially, when I questioned this, my manager acknowledged the problem, said they're working on it, and said, hey, it's better than it used to be. This is a Wild West show. Everyone seems to interpret their roles differently. Clients typically want us to shortcut our efforts and focus on designing features and deliverables. Effectively, we're an interaction design shop doing just enough user research to support our prescriptive solutions. I feel like I'm supposed to know everything and have mastery in all things design, and in a few cases, the client even expects it. As a result, I've developed a nasty case of imposter syndrome, though I have credentials and over 10 years of experience in design. I know the tools and techniques, and I once thought I was a decent designer. Is this the new normal? Is this how design has to be now? Fast and furious? I've had several days where I'm not even sure I can call myself a designer anymore. Some of the things I read seem focused on cramming more knowledge into your head and working faster than the breakneck speed that I'm currently enduring. It feels like I need to know too many things to stay effective, to stay competitive, and my ability to solve problems this quickly is just not strong enough. Should I change careers? Maybe after all these years I need to accept that I'm no longer fit for the role. I'm struggling. I'm terrified of the whiteboard when I'm with other de designers. I'm so conf I was so confident before but the pace and expectations are overwhelming me now. After almost a year, I'm not sure I'm gonna catch up. I can see that some of the designers there really love the crazy pace and thrive on this chaotic environment, but that's just not me. What are your thoughts on quitting this agency without another job lined up first? I need to find a way to take a breather, revisit my very dated portfolio, close my skill gaps. Right now, I can't imagine the energy to do that? Or is this simply a matter of finding an environment that's a better fit? Is this a common problem with agency work? It's really been a shock to me. I feel like I'm at the end of my rope in any number of ways, personally and professionally. Thanks for reading and I appreciate any feedback you can offer. Jim, I can feel your struggle, okay? And the reason I can feel it is because I've been there. Right. And not only have I been there, but, but in the last you know, 20 plus years in particular, um, and I would say in the last 10, even more markedly so, of, of working with large organizations in corporate environments, um, some of whom are agencies, some of whom are, are large companies, this happens a lot. Okay? The, the, the pressure that you're feeling, the things that you're struggling with, you're not alone. I promise you that. Okay, So number one, don't feel like you are the only person in the universe who, who is, is struggling or doesn't get it or can't keep up or you know everyone else can do this and I can't. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. It's not true. I promise you. If you've been doing this for 10 years, you can do it. All right? You have to believe in that. So I want to tell you a couple things to try to answer, to give you some reasonable answers to all that. Number one, this is not the new normal. It's not, okay? It, it's not right, it's not acceptable, it's not normal, it's not healthy. Okay, so don't believe for a minute that you should be okay with any of this. Nothing that you described is good in any way, all right? It, this can be very typical of an agency, however. 
Um, the gig for most agencies of any kind, whether it's a design agency or an ad agency, um, is volume. All right, they're dependent on getting the, a massive number of clients and no, a massive number of projects and churning to keep revenue coming in. Okay, it's it's that's sort of the gig. It's unfortunate, but it's reality. So. If the, if the agency gig is volume, it certainly sounds like that's where you're at. Right? You're, you're suffering simply because of the way things are. And, and I'm here to tell you that's likely not something <laughs> that you're going to change. You're not going to change that, that agency's model of how they do business, especially if it's been profitable for them. Money talks. Okay? <laughs> you know, and Bob Dylan would say that it swears, um, which I agree with. But it, it's, it, it's an uphill battle. I don't know that you're going to win it. So... Again, first point, this is not normal, all right? Don't, you shouldn't have to accept it. Um, number two, you are absolutely not an imposter in any way. Um, you are simply up against an untenable situation that's a bad fit for you, okay? These other designers that you're talking about that, that thrive on chaos, um, they're gonna be where you are eventually, I promise you, okay? They, they don't know that yet, but it's just going to take them longer to get there. <laughs> okay, one of the one of the benefits of youth is that your your energy levels and your ability to to be resilient and bounce back from things um, is really damn impressive. Um, but they'll get there, I, I promise you. Everybody and their brother, myself included, struggles with imposter syndrome. I recently did a, an interview with Melanie Spring on a podcast and talked a lot about that. All right, no one is immune, and the better you are at what you do the stronger that feeling gets. So what you're feeling about being an imposter, not being able to do this stuff um, is normal. I promise you, you gotta make peace with it. You don't necessarily have to overcome it, you just have to make peace with it. I get it, I see it, I know what it is, I'm gonna go forward anyway. All right, you have to use that as, as fuel and maybe look at it as your conscience just trying to keep you on your toes. It does not mean that you don't know what you're doing, all right? The next thing I want to say is I really believe that you should have a heart-to-heart -heart with your boss. Okay, Say everything that you've said to me here. Um, at best, they'll try to help you. <laughs> at worst, you're not pretending everything is okay. All right, you're not, you're not walking around with all this stuff inside um, and, and putting on the mask every day and pretending that you're okay with everything that's going on when you're not. That's stressful, it's damaging, it's painful and it, it sort of eats you from the inside out. Okay, it's not a good idea. When you do that, no matter what the outcome is, ask for two weeks off to clear your head, okay, and take it. Emphasize that you are extremely burnt, you're feeling like you're at the end of your rope and you really need it, okay? And finally, as much as it pains me to say this, um, you need to start looking for a new gig. All right, regardless of how the situation plays out, um, this environment isn't a fit for you, period. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. Again, there's nothing flawed about you. What's flawed is a situation. What's untenable and unfair is a situation, not you. All right? So start looking for something else. And the time to look for a job is always when you have a job. Okay. And I, I'm also going to say this on the heels of that. If you ever get to the point where life doesn't feel like it's worth living anymore, where it's profoundly impacting you as a human being, where you start questioning whether life on this earth is worth it, quit the job, period, okay? I'm serious about this. Quit the job, absolutely nothing is worth your life, ever. Not ever. And that may seem extreme to some of you who are watching this, but I cannot tell you, uh, for as long as I've been doing this, how many people have come to me and said, I am literally feeling like my life is worthless at this point because of what they have to put up with in a work environment, all right? It's not unique, it's not rare, it happens a lot. So I'm gonna say again, if you ever get to the point where you feel like life isn't worth the struggle, quit the job. I don't care what happens, just quit. The rest will work itself out, I promise you, okay? For as long as you remain at this organization, in the meantime, I encourage you to adapt this as your mantra. As a friend of mine once told me, sometimes the most perfect anything needs to be is done. <laughs> okay? Do what's in front of you, get through it, do it to the best of your ability, and put it aside. Okay? Strive for done, 
and, and don't kill yourself. All right, you do what you can and that's it. All right, I promise you, again, it's not a hopeless situation. It's tough, it hurts. Um, I, you can and you will find your way out to something better, I promise you. It doesn't feel like that now, but you'll get there, all right? You will. Hang in there, believe in yourself, I most certainly do. The obstacles in life, you know, we tend to treat them as, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? As, as, you know, an impediment to our journey, all right? The thing is this, those obstacles aren't part of the journey. They are the journey. <laughs> that's, that's part of the, the path to getting there. If I told you the number of wrong turns and difficult circumstances that I've encountered um, in my career, um, the answers would probably shock you and the volume would probably shock you as well, okay? It's part of the journey, it, it's the way it is, okay? Hang in there, keep your head up, Please feel free to talk to me <laughs> as this situation continues. I'm more than willing to listen. And uh, in all that you do in life and in work, give good UX.